Hi, good morning, everyone. So my name is Robinson Pino, and I'm a program manager in the Office of Advanced Scientific Computing Research. Uh, let me, I always like to ask this question. How many of you have heard about the Office of Science in the Department of Energy? All right, a lot more. Normally, a lot of people don't know or haven't heard about the Office of Science in the Department of Energy. And the mission of the Office of Science within uh, the DOE uh, is to deliver uh, scientific, scientific discoveries and major scientific tools to transform our understanding of nature and to advance uh, the energy and economic and national security of the United States. Uh, we fund a lot of uh, basic research. Uh, we're a mission-driven basic research uh, funding organization within the DOE. We yearly we fund approximately over 29,000 researchers in government, uh, laboratories, uh, industry, uh, and academia. Most of the the funding that we have uh, in our office. Uh, is, is directly spent to, for research and facility operations. And when I talk about facility operations, uh, it means our scientific user uh, facilities. Our office uh, is, is split up in six different offices. Uh, I am part of the Advanced Scientific Computing Research Office, normally say OSCAR. There's the Basic Energy Sciences biological and environmental research, fusion energy, high energy physics, and nuclear physics. And we have um, 10 uh, national laboratories uh, spread across the United States. And particularly, the laboratories that my office, uh, ASCAR, commonly works with uh, includes Argonne, Oak Ridge, uh, Berkeley, and PNNL. Uh, we also uh, work a lot with uh, Sandia, Los Alamos, and Livermore. In particularly, my office, um, our mission is to deliver world-leading computational and networking capabilities to extend the frontiers of science. Our user facilities in my office include the supercomputers, uh, for example, in NERSC, where we have two supercomputers and where we do a lot of basic research. They're being used for, for a lot of uh, fundamental science. We also, another of our facilities is Titan, which is uh, the largest open science supercomputer in the, the United States. Uh, we recently announced a, a new supercomputer called Summit uh, that is expected to operate at hopefully over 150 uh, petaflops. We also have a system in Argonne, the Argonne Leadership Computing Facility. And, and the question that you might ask yourself is why, why neuromorphic computing, why machine intelligence, why machine learning? Uh, one of the things that, we, that we've seen and that we, our scientists deal with uh, every day is with a lot of data. For example, in genomics, uh, their data volumes are 10 petaflops, high energy physics, 15 petaflops per year. Light sources generate approximately 300 terabytes of data, data per day. And climate change it is expected to exceed 100 exabytes of data. Uh, we, we think that the future of science is, is going to be driven primarily by science. Today, data movement within supercomputers, within networks, uh, within storage systems uh, account for a large portion of the energy and the costs uh, 
that it takes to perform science. And we only see these uh, requirements to, to increase over time. The, this is uh, an example of a workshop on scientific discovery at Exascale that was published in 2011. Basically, it states that the disruptive changes posed by progressive movement towards uh, exoskeleton HPC threatens to derail the scientific discovery process. Today's success in extracting knowledge uh, from HPC systems include uh, simulation output that are not generally applicable to exoskeleton environments and simply scaling existing techniques to higher concurrency is not sufficient to meet the challenge. And one of the challenges that I see is you, we can have faster systems, more throughput, more bandwidth, more data. However, if we don't have systems that help us to intelligently analyze data, to extract knowledge, to define the, the anomalies, what um, what should be looking for to accelerate the discovery process, uh, discovery might be, uh, m m might slow down. Uh, we see the data overall um, for all offices uh, within the Office of Science is, is a big challenge. How, how, how can scientists have access to data, large volumes of data, uh, how can we ensure that we have the capabilities to transmit, uh, analyze, and, and, dis and disseminate the data? Recently, I had a workshop <clears throat> on machine learning where we looked at, from a high performance point of view, uh, as, as, at three topics. One, self-aware runtime and operating systems where we explore solutions that are dynamic, adaptive, self-protective, and self-healing for application and, and the services, high-performance computing support. Managing HPC user facilities is a challenge uh, on its own. Uh, we, we looked at deep learning for big data, and the, and the question was, is it possible to generate knowledge from data, smart analytics, smart rendering, and usability? And another one is resiliency and trust. As we, as we increase the, the scales, the concurrency, as uh, the, the computations, the simulations get larger and larger, uh, there's a question as uh, how, how can we ensure uh, that computations and the results are correct in the presence of faults? How can we discover new patterns uh, on networks and data uh, perform anomaly detection, achieve data fusion from multiple sources, analyze social and behavioral networks to identify um, interesting behavior, or is it possible to use fingerprinting technologies? There is going to be a report that is going to come out of this workshop that I hope will be published on our website, I hope within a month. Similarly to the workshop that I hope will, uh, will come out of this workshop, uh, where I think uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the beyond uh, current state of the art from a machine learning point of view, uh, where I think we, we need to, it would be great if we can have um, a long-term sustained uh, mission-driven research and development portfolio um, so that we can um, so we can take uh, what we know today uh, scale it up to to scales that that uh, I think would be interesting for for everyone uh, in this room with that um, I want to thank Morat for having this uh, workshop and and I I've really enjoyed talking to, uh, listening to the talks. And with that, I want to thank everyone. And if anybody has a questions, let me know.